You can watch it starting in one hour right here on WISN 12. And we have team coverage with a look at the Packers for rounds two and three. Let's begin with 12 Sports Director Dario Melendez. Dario, the Pack used their first pick last night to bolster the defense. Yeah, it's the fourth straight first round pick the Packers have used on a defensive player. The Green Bay Packers select Lucas Finesse. Defensive end, Iowa. Green Bay selecting Iowa's Lucas Van Ness with a 13th overall pick. Remember, that's the pick they got from the Jets in the Rodgers trade. And funny enough, Van Ness was actually in Wisconsin when he got the call from the Packers last night. He and his family were in Fontana, which is near Lake Geneva. It feels so good to be a Green Bay Packer. I'm from Barrington, Illinois, and I played at Iowa for three years, and I can't wait to get up in Green Bay and help this team win some games. Go Pack Go! Yeah, his new GM feels the same way. Brian Gutekun saying they love the size and speed that he brings to the defensive line. I know you two are going to love this. His nickname is Hercules. So if the Packers don't use that scene from the Nutty Professor, when the mom's like, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> after, yeah, every, after every sack, uh, it's a crime. You've got to contact the marketing team, the <laughs> yeah, entertainment sure. team. All right, Dario, thank you. And 12 Sports, Jared Fialco is live in Green Bay right now. Jared, the Packers get three draft picks today. And Jordan Love, no doubt, wishing and hoping and thinking and praying that the Packers use some, if not all three of these picks on offensive weapons. Green Bay possesses the 42nd and 45th overall picks. That's numbers 11 and 14 in the second round. The former, thanks to that finalized deal with New York that made Aaron Rodgers a Jet, they also own the 78th overall pick. It may beg the question, though. Entering a new era at quarterback, why wasn't number 13 used on a stud wideout like Jackson Smith and Jigba, Zay Flowers, or Jordan Addison? But general manager Brian Gutekun says they had their big board mapped out, and they stuck to the plan. We actually we had really good choices. I mean, again, we have you know we don't pick high this high very often, so we had a lot of choices, and um, uh, I think it was just kind of how we had them rated. Um, obviously, we very much believe in rushing the passer, and edge rush was a very premium position for us, and um, it just that, that I think that was why we kind of made that decision. Again, the Packers with three picks spread out over tonight's two rounds, but that could change if another team picks up the phone. Cootie said his line was unusually quiet on Thursday. However, he doesn't expect the same low volume of callers this evening. It's a fluid situation. Yes. <laughs> Jared Fialco live at Lambeau Field tonight. And you can watch the NFL draft tonight starting at 6 o'clock right here on WISN 12. And then make sure you stick around for 12 news for a look at who the Packers pick. A serial burglary suspect captured in Racine. The crime spree spanned weeks throughout the city. 12 News Hillary Mintz reports on how police cracked the case and the clues that led them to an arrest. Window after window smashed. Brazen burglaries in Racine caught on camera. Last month, security cameras at Joey's Yard Arm on Erie Street captured a man bust into the restaurant through a porthole with just a few feet to spare. You're telling me this guy broke in through that little window there? That little window, yep, he did. <laughs> Anna Legath says fortunately he didn't steal anything and got out just in time. So he was in and out very quickly, jumped right back out the porthole window. <laughs> Racine police say this 53-year-old serial burglar is linked to five business break-ins since March, stealing cash and booze. Police realized the burglar was getting in the same way at all these businesses, using a brick or a piece of concrete and busting through windows. Such was the case at Mihakalito on Douglas. Cameras captured the burglar pull up, grab a rock and smash the glass. Express Food Mart was also struck. After busting through the front door, the burglar seen tearing the cash register off the counter. Police say the videos turned out to be critical clues in the case. Just kind of piece it all together from what they found on surveillance tapes in the area um, and, and solved the puzzle. The burglar now behind bars facing criminal charges. Costly repair? Yep, yep, yep. And it had to be boarded up for a while, so, you know, the whole look of it that somebody's breaking into places is kind of scary for people. A crime spree business owners are now glad is over. In Racine, Hillary Mintz, WISN 12 News. The suspected burglar has not been charged yet for the break-ins and was already in jail for other cases when police identified him. 
New tonight, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss ahead of the 2024 Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Will you support former President Trump if he's the nominee? Well, my hope is he's not the nominee. Um, I think that the world is sick and tired of politicians um, who are somewhat out of touch with where most of us are. Will you be there if he's the nominee? Oh, I mean, I'm going to go to the convention. It's something that's amazing for the state of Wisconsin and for our region. Um, you know, again, I hope that Donald Trump is a bystander, not the person at the center of the stage, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make that happen. Voss has had a contentious relationship with Donald Trump, and he's an exclusive guest Sunday on Upfront. New insight on the shared revenue negotiations. This is an interview you don't want to miss Sunday morning at 9 right here on WISN 12. A Waukesha North High School grad is headed to the NFL. Coming up, the moment he received the call and the text he received from his new teammate, Aaron Rodgers. And we're looking at a rainy weekend ahead. I'm timing it out coming up on WeatherWatch 12. Get money for your old stuff. Hey there, I'm Diana Gutierrez. Monday on 12 News This Morning, how to turn a specific baby product into some big discounts at one of the country's biggest stores. And wake up knowing what to wear with Lindsay's forecast. We'll see you starting at 430. What a moment for this Wisconsin native picked in the NFL draft. The New York Jets selected Waukesha North graduate Will McDonald IV Last night, McDonald arrived at the Jets facility today and talked about the life changing moment. Being able to show, you know, my, uh, my family and friends um, uh, that there is a way to do things and um, there, there is a way to, to like reach your goals and everything. 12 News' is Hannah Hillier joins us live from Waukesha North High School. And Hannah, McDonald went earlier in the draft than anticipated. 
He did, Kristen. So we do know that the Jets picked McDonald in the first round with the 15th overall pick in the NFL draft last night. And today we have learned that there were several members of the Waukesha North family right there next to him during that monumental moment. With the 15th pick. Announced from the big stage and seen on TVs nationwide. Yes, yes, yes. Select Will McDonald. Yeah. No living room had more excitement than this one with Iowa State linebacker Will McDonald at the center of it. And there with the Wisconsin native. Obviously, like the pride is just coming out. His Waukesha North mentor, Kristen Torzala and his high school coach, Matt Harris, who was sitting right next to him as the phone rang. And I could see where it said New York on the on the screen. And then I looked at the TV and I was like, man, New York's picking. I'm like, you should probably pick that one up. So I'm like, he just took a phone call. And everyone's like, what is going on? I was like, oh my God, he's taking a phone call. The two first met McDonald in 2015 when he transferred to Waukesha North as a sophomore. Having never played football, Harris convinced him to go out for the team his junior year. From that moment, the moment we saw him, you know, on the football field, we just, I just knew like that the kid was as special as any athlete I had ever seen. After just two years on this field, McDonald signed with Iowa State and stayed through his senior year, becoming the first in his family to graduate college. And then getting picked 15th from a team that like nobody was expecting, like, I think I cried like four times on the way here just thinking about like how cool this is for him and you know for the community that he's built for himself. Um, yeah, the emotions are just all over the place. Hannah, so we have to ask as a Wisconsin native, did McDonald grow up a Packers fan, maybe watching Aaron Rodgers? Okay, surprisingly, <laughs> no, Kristen. So because he got such a late start to his football career, his mentors tell us that he didn't really follow the sport growing up and didn't really know much about football. That has obviously changed. And we have learned that Aaron Rodgers texted McDonald within 10 minutes of that Jets selection last night. Oh, that's very special. Thank you, Hannah Hill. You're reporting live in Waukesha. And day two of the NFL draft is tonight. You can watch it at 6 o'clock right here on WISN 12. That story gave me chills. It did. What really? A great Just story. looking at the reaction mm. from the coach and his yeah. mentor, they're so happy All for him. All that hard work, too. Yeah. <laughs> Turning now to weather after yesterday's sunshine. Clouds are parking over southeast Wisconsin. Yeah, the weather might give you some chills this weekend. <laughs> the clouds will come with rain. Yeah, we're not in the best pattern right now. It's just gloomy and we're going to see another upper level low stick over us and that's why we're going to stay wet, stay cold throughout our weekend and even into the early week. So as we look at the next two days, impact days here. Temperatures tumble. We've been in the 60s for today as well as our Thursday. Tomorrow likely only in the 50s and then by Sunday only in the 40s. Our outside time not going to be the best tomorrow as we're tracking out a cold front. There will be some dry time in the morning and then again after that cold front passes as we head into your Saturday evening. For our Sunday, winds will start to increase and we'll have more chances for rain. So here's what we have going on right now. We're in a dry zone here across southeastern Wisconsin, but we have two systems, one to our west. This will be the headache that I was talking about, and then one to our south that could push in some very stray showers across southeastern Wisconsin near the lakefront later on this evening. But right now, most of that moisture has been sitting well to our east. So this will continue to move in as we head through our Saturday. Right now, it's cloudy out there. We had some sunshine earlier. Hope you got to enjoy that. As you head through tonight, once again, it may be a stray shower. Saturday, that cold front rolls through into our late morning back to our western counties and places like Beaver Dam, Fort Atkinson. And then as we head into your uh, afternoon hours, it will arrive here across Milwaukee as well as in a Waukesha. For Sunday, still want to have those umbrellas out. As our future cast plays out, we're noticing cloudy start, but dry conditions around 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. There goes the front. It'll continue to spark rain into Fond du Lac, down into Janesville around 10 a.m. Then as we head closer to noon time and continuing to around 4 p.m., it will make its way across portions of Port Washington, Menominee Falls, McGuanago, down to Racine, Kenosha, Oak Creek, as well as Milwaukee. 5 p.m., we'll see some dry time, and then there could just be some 
some hit or miss activity until about 10 o'clock. As we head closer to 11 and there on after, our upper level low starts doing its thing, bringing in more moisture, winds, and cold air as we head into our Sunday as well as into our Monday. There will be on and off activity as we head through our Sunday and Monday. And by Tuesday, the bulk of this should be moving out towards our east. But as this wet weather moves in, so do those winds. Monday, we could have gusts close to 35 miles per hour. So we're going to be grabbing for the layers once again as we head into the next three days and we'll continue to need it for our Tuesday with a high of only 52 degrees. By mid and late next week is where we start to notice some improvements as we go into the first week of May. Hopefully we get back to the 60s uh, by this time next week. So you got to make it through this weekend and then hope for next Friday that that sunshine sticks around. Some mix on Monday. Yeah, you're still seeing your face. <laughs> I know. It won't be too uh, much, just enough to make you make a face like that. We're, yes. we're not done yet. All right, thanks, Tashi. We'll be right back.